changes may be coming to a parking sign near you. In Los Angeles, trying to find a parking space is a full contact sport. It's one of the most frustrating things that we all experience. And I think most Angelinos are convinced that the city is out to get them. And maybe with good reason, because in the past, quite often, it seems like we've designed a more and more difficult uh, parking system for the city of LA. We should be in the business of making things user friendly. We should be in Los Angeles in the business of making it easier to park, not easier to give you a ticket. The new parking signs being installed in downtown Los Angeles are completely different from anything drivers have ever seen. Also on Midday Sunday, California growers are facing huge challenges as the state's water shortage worsens. Community gardens, as well as the gardens many of us have in our backyards, are also threatened. It's a problem that goes way beyond imposing limits on when we can water our lawns. We'll cover all this on today's edition of Midday Sunday. Good Sunday morning, everybody. We are delighted uh, today to, uh, well, first of all, we're going to deal with water uh, a little bit later in this program. We're delighted to do that. We're also delighted to welcome the Honorable Paul Krikorian from the 2nd District of Los Angeles County, which is basically the San Fernando Valley. That's right. Uh, and this is his idea, this sign. Look at that thing. <laughs> How, where did the idea come from? Well, I'll tell you, Tony, We every council member, everybody in city government has heard from their constituents about how hard it is to find a place to park mm -hmm. in Los Angeles and how hard it is in many places to figure out whether it's legal to park there. And we all have so many stories that we've heard from constituents about people who've been written very expensive parking tickets yeah. at a time when they thought that they were parked legally. Right. And that's just not fair. So we came a across a design that uh, was created by a graphic designer in New York uh, who has a website devoted specifically to parking problems. And she had an architecture for a design like this that lays it out in more of an organizer format that people are very familiar with. So I introduced a motion as soon as I saw that to uh, try to get our Department of Transportation to mm -hmm. develop a design that would be more understandable, clearer, um, wouldn't require a lot of text uh, and would eliminate these ridiculous overlapping towers of uh, signs that have uh, many layers of restrictions that people just have a, a heck of a time trying to figure out. So it begins with the basic uh, red is no and green is yes. Uh, decipher this one for us. Well, so at a given time, suppose you want to, uh, it's a weekday and it's between 7 and 9 a.m. This X makes very clear there's no stopping there and it's a tow-away zone. Uh -huh. uh, beginning at 9 a.m., you have two-hour parking. Uh, at 4 p.m., again, you have uh, a no-stopping tow-away zone. Mm -hmm. um, Saturday is all clear except there's a two-hour restriction between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., so that's uh -huh. two-hour parking. So each one of these boxes would normally be its own sign. Um, and oh, we've kind yes. of condensed those into this organizer format, so it's very easy to see. Has there any been anything like this used elsewhere before? Uh, we believe Los Angeles will be the first city in the country to test this, uh -huh. even. And in California, we have to go through a regulatory process to get any kind of parking restriction sign approved by the state of California. That process is underway now. Uh -huh. There's also federal approval and, and so forth. But um, we're testing this right now today at downtown mm -hmm. on Spring Street, Main Street. Uh, we have a hundred of these signs up. They're informational only for now, but as that regulatory process uh, is concluded, uh, we'll be able to put these up uh, citywide. Part of the pilot program is to try to gather the public's input about whether they like it. Mm -hmm. Do they, can they suggest improvements? Are there things about this that they don't quite get? Um, by the time the pilot program's over, we'll have a refined version of this that we'll be able to roll out citywide. So these have only been up for, what, about a week now? Yeah, just since last Friday. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, what's the, is there any preliminary response from your constituents or the people downtown? It's been overwhelmingly positive. Just seeing this design, uh, there's a sense of relief that people have expressed that mm -hmm. finally uh, they're not going to have to be able to interpret hieroglyphics to figure out whether it's legal to park in a, a mm -hmm. particular place. And so there's really been a strong positive reaction. Now, eventually, uh, these part of the plan is for these to be uh, accompanied by an electronic device that connects to a smartphone? Right. The Department of Transportation had uh, the ingenious idea of adding a Bluetooth uh, transmitting device on each one of these signs, mm -hmm. uh, which 
are not currently programmed to, to do anything. We're going to work with app designers um, so that they, they can design apps that will utilize that technology for all sorts of different purposes. You can have wayfinding apps, you could have apps that interpret the parking restrictions, you could have apps that tell the history of a given block of the city based on where the person is, maybe directing tourists to points of interest based on where they are. There's any number of different creative apps that we hope will be developed because of that. Ultimately, we have to ask about cost, not only the cost of the signs, which is roughly for the pilot program maybe what about sixty five dollars each uh... yeah the whole cost of the pilot program is under seven thousand uh -huh. dollars so um, and there's a hundred signs so yeah, yeah that's yeah. roughly right and yeah. we don't know what the cost will be for a whole citywide rollout yet that'll be part of the analysis that the council and the department mm -hmm. uh... in the mayor's office will be doing at the conclusion of the pilot so at a time when there's a crunch all over the place is it is is it money well spent I think so. And, and people ask, well, isn't this going to produce fewer parking tickets? Exactly. And, and the answer is, I certainly hope so. Because, yes, it will cost the city some money. Uh, it will cost some lost revenues. But the truth is, the city shouldn't be balancing its budget by tricking people. Um, we, we have no interest in having an unfair parking system be the basis for our city revenues. And mm -hmm. people perceive it to be unfair. We want to try to fix that by making it as clear as possible. Mm. The, um, and these would apply also in neighborhoods where there are uh, restricted parking based upon the, the time of day, or, or you need a permit to park in these areas overnight. That would be another level of complexity that would have to be added to the sign for a particular neighborhood. Uh -huh. But each one of these, of course, is going to have to take into account the unique restrictions of each neighborhood. Yeah. You can't just print these generically. Um, they have to take into account the specific restrictions for a specific block. So each of those sorts of factors would have to be taken into account in that particular neighborhood. There's another issue involving parking, particularly in a downtown area where parking is hard to come by, and that's the apps. Yeah. Um, part of this move towards the sharing economy has included the development of things like uh, there's a system called monkey parking that's mm -hmm. been uh, done in a number of cities in which people use an app to essentially sell the parking space that they are leaving. So um, s they send a message out, somebody else can come and park in their space, mm -hmm. and they get paid for it. We've prohibited that in Los Angeles for, for the very reason that this is a public asset and people shouldn't be making private profit out of a public asset that the taxpayers are paying for. But there are areas, San Francisco, it, it, this is legal there now, isn't it? I don't know what the status in San Francisco is. I know that they did launch there as well and I don't know how San Francisco has reacted to it. Uh, but look, Again, parking is difficult enough in Los Angeles, and maybe this creates some convenience for people, but it also adds cost to them, and, and that just seems unfair. But the idea that it does create some convenience, and people nowadays are willing to pay for convenience. Well, I suppose, but uh, to me, the, the biggest problem with that is the taxpayers pay for our streets, and we shouldn't have private entrepreneurs essentially taking up parking spaces for the purpose of selling them to the highest bidder. That's just not fair, uh, and it's, it's not an appropriate mm -hmm. use of the taxpayer's assets. Mm -hmm. Going beyond this, what other concerns do we have? What do you have about um, being able to move around? I, I would imagine, especially in your area, that there would be an interest in, in light rail uh, at actually getting people out of their cars. You bet. Um, the San Fernando Valley has a great need for more investment in transit. And I serve uh, on the Metro Board, I mm -hmm. serve on the Metrolink Board, and in both of those roles we're working hard to move people more effectively through the valley. The Orange Line, for example, has been a tremendous success for the people of the San Fernando Valley, much beyond all expectations. But we think it could be even more successful if we can expand its capacity, because right now it's it's filled to the brim, yeah. and so we have to figure out how to expand the capacity. Maybe that's a, by converting it to light rail, from a bus rapid transit to a light rail system. Can't you just add some extra buses? We're looking at how we can do that too, using l longer buses, mm -hmm. adding more buses, synchronizing the signals, having grade separation. Those are all things that we're looking at mm -hmm. now to speed it up, 
increase capacity. Uh, we also have to have more north-south transit and particularly through the 405 corridor through the Sepulveda Pass. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's probably going to be the subject of a ballot measure that will be coming up in 2016. Uh, those projects and many more, uh, Metro is working on developing the menu mm -hmm. of projects that will most effectively move people around the county. The Orange Line, as a, I, I'm a little bit of a transportation fan, and um, the Orange Line has always amazed me because there have been many studies done, not just here in L.A., but elsewhere, which says that middle-class uh, commuters, they don't like to ride buses. Mm -hmm. They'll ride light rail, but they won't ride buses. Yet, I've been out exploring, photographing the Orange Line, and there's all kinds of people on that. Absolutely. And part of the reason is because um, it is a set-aside busway. Oh, yeah. And uh, so it's not just a bus on a street. It's a dedicated bus rapid transit system. That's what makes it so effective. Um, but I think it can be even more effective if we speed it up. And some of these methods are mm. ways that we can do that. It's interesting, grade crossings. And this would be with uh, crossing gates and that whole thing? Either that or actual grade separation with yeah. overpasses, underpasses. Uh, that will significantly speed up the route from the West San Fernando Valley to North Hollywood. Well, I can, I can imagine all sorts of people, not just your constituents in the 2nd District, but all sorts of people saying, yes, for this man. He's, <laughs> he's going to make it easier to park and easier to get around. We hope so. All right. We thank you in advance for this. I'm sure that uh, you'll come back and talk to us when we've got the results for this. Anytime. All Thanks, right. Tony, very much. Uh, the Honorable uh, Paul Krikorian, 2nd District, Los Angeles City Council. We'll be back. We're going to talk about water, not just the situation with your lawn, but what do you do about your avocado tree, your, 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 your tomatoes in the backyard? you got to think about conserving water for them as well. We'll talk about that when we come back.